Welcome to the Resistance broadcast, everybody. Now that you've had the chance to watch that Andor trailer 500 times, you can hang with us as we're going to spend most of our show talking about that trailer. We're going to try to break it down. Uh, we're not going to do a frame by frame crawl or anything, but we're going to get into the nitty gritty here, do some speculating, some theorizing, maybe connecting some dots. The classic discussion as you tackle mm -hmm. a Star Wars trailer. That's this episode. So thank you for joining us here on this Thursday, or maybe you're watching it later, but either way, uh, thank you. Uh, and joining me as always is Lacey and James. Um, Lacey, you, uh, I got to congratulate you because you, uh, have made it two episodes in a row on the podcast. So I Only think you're just doing a great job. Wow. Long time listener. Yeah. First time caller. Yes, indeed. Um, so what's, what's going on? Have you made any changes to your background? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's the same gang. No. One of those things is when you're sick and dying, you don't really change much. You just go back right, to you're normal. Not, you're not dying, okay? I felt you're like not, I was dying. You're not Cassie and Andor. I normal, have... Right? Ooh, ooh. Uh, spoiler alert. I... <laughs> <laughs> that phrase means nothing anymore, by the way. It means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. <laughs> it, it's like, it's it like never meant anything wolf. to you anyway, so... Well, that's obviously not true. <laughs> I beg to differ. Yeah. Um... Yeah, my background is not its final in its final form, but it's working. DBC for now. reference. You're welcome. <laughs> um, James, what's going on with you? Nothing. Nothing too crazy. By the time you guys see this, we'll have already done it. But my work does like an annual. A uh, big festival called Midwest Audio Fest, and uh, there's a big speaker design competition. So Ooh. that uh, we have not, we did not do it in 2020 or 2021. So it's kind of like the return of the speaker design competition. So it's kind of exciting. are you are you booth guy? Are you like come check out Speaker City Parts <laughs> Express? Speaker no, no, no. City. It's our it's our th event. Oh, it's your just your company. It's not like an expo. I see no, no, no. Yeah, Mid oh, Midwest wow. Audio Fest is people come to shop. Like normally, we do like a tent sale kind of thing, and then there's like car oh, audio okay. stuff, and then there's like n a new product showcase thing, and then there's are the you, speaker design. I wonder if my buddy you... Randy is going to be there. Um, probably. I I know that we. I've said this before, but we work with him. Mm -hmm. Um. On Cheap like audio, YouTube man. Go on, check him yeah. out on YouTube. Yeah. Um, are you like a a face type of person? Like, do they know that you're this big, outgoing podcast personality? <laughs> well, I'm the face of their YouTube stuff anyway. So you when do the voices, yeah, that's right. I yeah. do on screen, on camera stuff too. You're on camera, yeah, a lot, yeah. What? I you just know? remember Daniel Kennedy saying he was trying to set up LED lighting behind his TV and he was like, and I went on YouTube and there was James Bainey. Yeah, like Ash, oh. Ash texted me and was like, yeah. so this was crazy. Uh, we were watching <laughs> this video and you popped up. But the weird thing was, is I it wasn't me in person. They recognized me by my voice, which was voice, wild. Yeah. Right, exactly. On that yes. particular video. Yes. Um, well, you know why, James? Do you know why? He's got we're the voice of a generation. Strides. On the oh. audio end of things. I mean, it was always a big part of our audience. Mm -hmm. Like, over 80% of our audience is audio. But, like, we're ha like we our numbers have been great this year. And, like, Spotify is growing a lot. So, I just wanted to take a quick moment to, like, thank everybody. for. And we did it on Twitter. But I know not everybody's on Twitter. But, like, this year alone, we've had an additional 1,000 followers just on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Followers. People are like, I want to follow this podcast. So just in this calendar year alone. So I don't know if it's from celebration or what, but, and however you found us, like, thank you to everybody who's been joining us over on Spotify. In addition to the other platforms, um, we've been, uh, a good place to really let us fortunate. know where you found us is through a review too. That's very helpful yeah. to go in. And, and how was it a search? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Did someone tell you about us? Like that's, that, that's always interesting to me. Anytime anyone says, I found your podcast this year. I always say like, you know, thank you so much. How do you mind if I ask how you found us? And it's sometimes it's either a friend told me I follow Lacey on Twitter or I just looked up Star Wars podcast and you guys came up. I'm like, yeah. you know, because <laughs> there's there's like there's a few Star Wars podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, so 
Um, it's cool that we pop up. When Just a search, few. So. <laughs> I know. I was talking to somebody about that. I was joking around with somebody on Twitter and they're like, yeah, I'm going to start a blog, a Star Wars blog and just the, uh, counteract everything you're saying. I'm like, it's good you chose a blog versus a podcast because there's like 5 million podcasts. So, but uh, everyone has, the, the most important thing is everyone has fun doing it. And so that's really all that matters. And if you don't have fun doing it, then... You're doing something wrong because talking about Star Wars is a good time. It's a good time. Uh, so thank you to what everybody that? who. That what did Chicago. you just do? New York. Chicago. <laughs> no, that was Chicago. New York. New York's when you say like four. You got four dollars. Stop. But Chicago, you say that. I'm having I'm having a good time. Good I, time. What's the thing with uh, what people say when you say khakis? It sounds like you're saying car keys in Boston. Khakis. In Boston, yeah. Khakis. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Boston's hard to do. Boston's not easy. Yeah, it's wicked ad. Tough. That's not bad. I know. What the hell do I know though? Um all right. You said you had instead over there, of but... hard, right? Wicked had. Had. Wicked had. <laughs> yeah. Pack it ca have it yad. You just Meanwhile, have to John... replace all the words with different words and then you can do the accents. Just watch Goodwill Hunting and then Meanwhile, John's over here saying four. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have an accent when I was little. It's funny watching old home videos. I sound so Long Island. Matt's parents have such a hard <laughs> New York accent. You just drop R's. Yeah, that's basically it's what like it is. It's like Linda Belcher get... from Bob's Burgers. Be- Park the car like, around on, the corner. Greg, what are you doing? Beer can the deli, pick up the in paper. an English accent sounds like bacon in a Jamaican accent. Oh my god! You're just saying like internet things. <laughs> I know, like, like James, Facebook James, memes that like James my nana shares. <laughs> eat a popsicle and start telling us jokes about like how much does the ice weigh? <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> Whatever. Um, we could. All right, here's the deal, <laughs> James. We have a segment that we had to kind of dust off a bit, huh? Mm-hmm. So why don't bit. we kick off the show, and you do the honors as always, sir. The force is with me, and I'm one with the force. All right, if you are expecting Will of the Force, we are not doing it this week. Uh, we decided to let Cheer take a break, and we're bringing Baze in to hold the fort. If anybody was listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is hold What is for- happening? It's, it's hold, hold the fort. fort. Yeah. Hold fort, right? Hold the fort. You were saying oh, hold right. down the fort. holding down the fort. Yeah. Right. Hold the fort, yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, we're doing one with the Force this week, and we're going to kick it off with the first question here. If you had to show somebody one scene from a Star Wars live-action Disney Plus series, what scene would you show them? John, you're Star going Wars first. John. On- yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Oh, man. It's, it's a t- I, I had such a hard time doing two scenes, but I'm making the tough choice, and I'm going to say the Obi-Wan and Vader final duel in the final episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. It's a big one. Um, my second one, I, I'll make sure that I'll, you guys may say it, so I'll wait till you guys answer to say what my second one is. It was okay. very hard for me not to pick that one, but okay. that's my pick. I just think that they really brought it. I think you can say what you want about the budget and stuff for Obi-Wan Kenobi. They brought it in that scene, and I thought it was, I thought it put the show over, over the top. Mm-hmm. So Vader versus Obi-Wan, final duel in the finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, Lacey, what's your scene? I think I know what James is going to say, so I'm not going to say it. I know what you're going to say. Everyone knows what I'm going to say. Luke Skywalker showing up. Yep. Duh. Yep. (laughs) I mean, my other would be Baby Yoda because everybody likes Baby Yoda, but I Mm -hmm. feel like that's a given that like everybody loves. When he shows up? Yeah, when you first see him. And does the E.T. thing? Yeah, it's very cute. I mean, any Baby Yoda scenes. Isn't it weird? Like... You know, like when you have you have your own kid, like Lacey, you're probably not there yet, but like James, like you don't see your kid age or grow up because you see them every day. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, you do. But well, you know what I'm saying. Are you like, kidding? Per- you look at photos of your kid when you bring them home, and you're like, they're the most beautiful child I've ever seen in my life. And yeah. then you look at pictures of them now, and then look at the pictures when you took them home. Well, and that's you're like- what I mean, though. You don't see the progression; you see it by looking at old photos. Mm-hmm. So with Baby Yoda. Like when you look back at that first episode, you're like, wow, they did like grow him up. I'm like, mm-hmm. you don't realize it, but mm-hmm. they really have like taken he, baby he steps. Grows up. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Lacey, if you were right, uh, let's find out. It is the first crate dragon. Crate dragon, yeah, it's the crate dragon scene in Mandalorian. Because it's the it's the, at this moment like that was my other one. Yeah, at this moment the uh, James said it was the best episode he's ever watched the Mandalorian. So yeah, because that that moment is the most cinematic thing we've gotten I think on TV yep. yet. We've had other moments that have been like. Wow, this means a lot. Like, not downplaying anything you guys are doing, but like the Luke Skywalker thing is a great one. Um, and mm. and the, the Obi Wan versus Vader fight; those scenes are impactful because of the story and the characters and stuff. But that crate dragon thing was just like, this is a freaking movie. Like, they yeah. did things in it that like, th- and they've yet to go back to. We've not. I don't. Oh, maybe we have. I was like, I don't think we've seen anything where they've like expanded for the widescreen 16 by nine aspect ratio or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It just, it, it was so mm-hmm. crazy at the time. I was like, if anybody's going to see something, uh, I would show them this and say like, this is, this is what you're missing, but also this is the height of it. So <laughs> like watch this scene and then you're good. <laughs> just yeah. Kidding. That was big time. So that's the other Favreau one. Brought all right. It. Uh, all right. Those are our scenes. Uh, the next question or scenario, I guess you'd say, is fans are always talking about characters they want to see more of. So let's flip it and get a little spicy on the show. <laughs> what is one Star question. Wars character you would be good with seeing no more of in the future uh, content coming up? Uh, John started the last one. So Lacey, you have to get spicy first. I would say Tally Lintra, but she's already dead. Mm. Bombs oh. away. Um, <laughs> God. That's that, like that was like the tenth wing on hot ones. That's <laughs> that's old school for some people. Um a character I wouldn't want to see more of. I'm trying to think of like any characters that have really annoyed me. I don't think anything's really annoyed me in Star Wars to the point that I'm like, I would never want to see them again. Hmm. Um this is tough. I, I don't know. Constable Zuvio, so I don't have to hear about him ever again. <laughs> yeah, th- this <laughs> this was tough because it's like writing the line of like, oh, background character that doesn't have any speaking lines versus like the... <laughs> we, you want to say someone that's like somewhat substantial, but the bigger you get, the more okay. the more you're like, well, I don't really hate that character, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't hate any Star Wars characters. I'm obviously sure, joking, sure, sure, sure. but yeah. um, go to John and come back. Okay, to John, me. what, what do you got? One. John, you look like you have a mustache. <laughs> like the way your face was, he yeah, does look, have a mustache. Yeah, I know, but it looked even more prominent it's when he was me, doing that. Mario. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is gonna bring some problems, but whatever. Uh, after her series is over, I'm all set with Ahsoka. I knew you were going to say Soka. I knew it. Guys, I know you so well. <laughs> it's just there's been a lot of Ahsoka. Yeah. And I feel like they're, I feel like they're going to end her story with that series. So I think uh, I'll be good. It doesn't mean like I don't like her, but you get seven seasons of Clone Wars. She's in like three seasons of Rebels or whatever. And then uh, now Mandalorian and she pops in Book of Boba Fett. And she's in the Rise of Skywalker as a voice. Like, she's been in Star Wars more than Luke Skywalker. So, I don't think it's wrong to say. I think we're good here. Uh, maybe. That's all. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an Ahsoka Tano pun, but I can't. Like, I thought of, like, Ahsoka too much. This well, you've seen a Tano. Time. Yeah, Ahsoka. John always does that one. A ton of puns. Mm. <laughs> it's just making me think of that time that I was quizzing John. And I made yeah, <laughs> we were like, anyway. it has to be a movie quote. It wasn't quizzing John. It was a uh, who are you? Who are you? She goes Ahsoka Tano. We're all like, it's a movie quote. She's but like, it was the video that James made. <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> we gotta do though more of those. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, oh you got gosh. one, James? No, go ahead, James. I, I'm right. having a lot of trouble with this. So. Like like I said before, I was trying to find the balance there, and this is nothing against what is coming up because I am excited about it, but got to go with Bad Batch. Wait, what? So clones? <laughs> no, the Bad Batch characters. Like all of them? All of them, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, my my thoughts are that 
the Bad Batch as itself already exists as a spinoff of the other show. So the Clone Wars mm-hmm. is about Ahsoka and Obi-Wan and Anakin and stuff. And the Bad Batch were secondary characters that they somehow got their own show. But uh, if I'm really thinking about it, see, you know, season one, season two, they got their thing. If that was it for the Bad Batch, I don't think I'm particularly interested in a Bad Batch book, a Bad Batch comic. Like, if, like, it would be, I guess, kind of neat if they showed up somewhere in live action. But again, I don't really feel like that's necessary or, or drives the story. It would only be like a fun little anecdote that, oh, there they are. That's cool. That's them in live action. I don't think it's necessary. So after Bad Batch season two, I'm like, just wrap it up with those clones, those characters. That's fine for me. Mm. So you're saying no mega for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know what, honestly, I think I'm having trouble with this question because I'm that annoying person that always asks for more of character. So I feel like I'm being hypocritical to be like- I wonder what inspired mm -hmm, the question. To be like, stop talking about this. Um, Probably Phasma. I feel like she's she's good. I've had enough of- That's such a- uh. It's a I'm smart sorry. answer. It's a smart <laughs> that's a answer. Cop, that's a cop out pick. It's a smart answer that I'm pretty sure John gave in an episode. So I'm... That's your answer, that's Phasma, who's listen. dead. Phasma, who's dead. But there are people that want more answer. from her. That hey, she didn't. Maybe she didn't die. Maybe I want. There's, I'm good. There's I'm good with her story. Air, there's an off air answer. I'm sure that you are not willing to bring to the table right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Here know. I what am you're putting, about. putting myself. I don't out think there. Lacey wants to see any more Ben Solo stuff. <laughs> there were so many. There were so many chances to really give us a happy ending at the end of the Rise of Skywalker. And I love that I'm saying that as I'm wearing a Rise of Skywalker shirt. I'm just full of hypocrisy today. Well, let's move, let's move on to the next one. That's a good enough answer because they could do more Phasma stuff. Uh, you know, I would. John's mad that he didn't come up with the Phasma answer. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah okay. Um, oh, I don't want to see any more uh, Felicia's Crumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with that character. <laughs> had, that his, guy. had his time. All right, Star next Wars one here Twitter's gonna come after me for that one. All right, you <laughs> are you have been uh, given the task of hosting a Star Wars awards show, and you Ooh. are giving out the award for the best voice acting performance. Who is it that's gonna win that award? Um, Lacey, do you want to go? You first? go first. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I I okay. There's one answer that I'll give it to, and if you're not gonna count it, then I'll do this. I'm gonna give it to Mark Thompson. Does that count? For the books? Uh I guess so. Yeah. He's he's, he's, really good. he's doing the voice acting for the characters. Yeah. I that think counts. I think he is the sort of prime example of what the, I think they want more Star Wars uh, audiobook readers to be like. I think they have a couple that they go back to and those are fine, but I think that Mark Thompson always gets this extra like, he really goes out of his way to try to mimic the characters and he flips between characters pretty quickly. Um, if you didn't say that, I'll do what you did earlier, John. I'll, I'll give you another one if one of you guys don't say it, but... Uh, but, uh, for me, I would say Mark Thompson, uh, deserves a little bit of that. Like, Hey man, you, you crushed it. That, yeah, he is really, really good. What Am do you I guys up? got? Uh, Shirley Henderson, Baba Frick. Oh, oh, oh shit. That is really good. Because she not only did an amazing voice that is so unique and memorable, but she also learned how to puppeteer for the role. So that she could do it in scene. That's that's good. We're breaking the mold here because I wasn't sure if you would let me do books, but I wasn't even picturing live action voice. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. only thinking animation initially. Mm -hmm. I so still John, can't believe they haven't yours? released that Mando trailer, by the way. I had to watch some oh, yeah. potato version from someone's phone. Oh, uh, yeah. Only James has seen it. Mm. Three Ambers. times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Frank of Oz? course you say Yoda. Oh, wait a what minute. A cop out answer. 
Man, how, I, I really on, thought... On. How was that a cop-out answer? You did the exact same thing, just a worse pick. Cop-out <laughs> answer. Everyone's going to say Yoda. You can't say who's the best voice actor and not say I, Frank I would, Oz. I would bet you if you pitch this question online, people, most people wouldn't think of Yoda. I, I bet would, most people would say Sam Witwer. You want to make a bet? Because I guarantee that the, most people would say Yoda. 100%. I don't know. This is crazy because I literally didn't even think live action. I thought I was cheating by by doing a book. I thought it was only animation. So I was looking at like Freddie Prince Jr.'s and uh, Ashley X Hillary's and stuff. Yeah, that stuff. That's what I was thinking of. I was like, so my secondary answer, I'll throw it out now, it was going to be D. Bradley Baker. Cause That's I was a great like, answer. He's That's flipping in script, in character, can go back and forth instantly, so he deserves some recognition there. But, but I'm now just I'm saying, like, though, I'm hearing Frank Oz, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like right. But I what didn't I'm know saying that, is that was an option. Boom. It's like making the question like, who's the best creator of Star Wars? Obviously, you're going to answer George Lucas. There's only one. What are you talking about? That's the point. But that's not. That's not this. You could give it. You could give it to James Earl Jones for like Darth Vader, right? But I'm saying yes, if you, you were going to pick the top of the top, like the number one answer, it would be Yoda. I don't think that's true. You're such a liar. We could figure. We could figure it out. I mean, you could put this butt before the episode comes. That could out. be our next poll on Patreon. Great! Yeah. I can't wait for everybody to answer we're Yoda. S- we're still in one. With they the will force. not because they love me. <laughs> Did we yeah. get our three? Man of the people. Man of the people. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to the last one here. Uh, Wait, name... He's like, I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. go get sick again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to cough in my face? <laughs> Lacey's Googling, can you get COVID-20? <laughs> Lacey would rather have COVID than listen to me talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, last one the here is... The funny thing is John was like, how are you doing? Your presence is really missed on the podcast. <laughs> Cut to now. Did I say that? Yeah. When you were asking me if I needed anything in my house, which now makes me feel worse for being so mean. (laughs) The truth is out there now. (sighs) (laughs) All right. Name one screenwriter who has never written Star Wars nor has been reported to be working on Star Wars that you would like to see in a future movie or series. Right, Not see in, but write the future movie or series. John, what do you got? Who's your screenwriter of choice? I think people Why is it will Matt not Damon? be surprised by this. <laughs> Matt, Matt Damon? Damon. He won, a, won an Academy Award for his writing. Oh, my God almighty. Uh, I'm going with the Duffer Brothers. Oh, that was my answer. Duffer maybe, Brothers. Maybe I should watch this Stranger Things show that everybody's talking about. <laughs> Do you want to know who dies? Because John will tell you. Wait a minute. James, you haven't watched any of Stranger Things? Uh no, I've watched like the first two. First two seasons. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Do you guys are both typically... going Duffer Brothers? Do you want to give your answer why, John? I just I I think they really nailed the aspect of writing stories amongst uh friends and like that whole like coming of age stuff and that's right in the pocket with star wars and in and, and, like what george lucas created it for and they know how to treat a lot of characters and give like they have like 30 characters and they somehow give them all arcs and stuff and i just think they really do a great job of of towing the line of like even making dialogue that should be cheesy work and how they have these actors deliver it and stuff i think they've really got something special here and if i know they're hooked up with netflix but if i was kathleen kennedy i'd be like blank check i will you guys can write whatever you want doesn't have to be connected to anything do it after episode nine make us whatever and i think it would be really cool so Mm -hmm. same lacy yeah they they're just top of mind of great storytelling great connectivity between characters and like john said you don't oftentimes you know as fans we fall to like whoever the main character is is like oh that character is so great 
the the most popular characters in Stranger Things are usually the other people that aren't the main characters. It's mm-hmm. the side characters, and the everybody has their favorites. Yeah, um, and they really get their moments to shine. Like uh, John said, they have their like hero moments. Um, I I actually just saw an ad recently that they did a master class uh, mm-hmm. seminar that you can pay to go through their writing process and how they pitch a TV show and all that stuff. So if anybody's interested, it is out there. I was going to get That's it. That's cool. Yeah, do they have I more have than one TV show? No. So, I don't think so. I'd like to see. I, think, I mean, not to criticize. I don't know what like, their their history is, but I yeah. mean, this project in itself is a monster. Yeah, I, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, I, they just talked through the whole process and it seemed like a something I'd be really good. Yeah, John, you probably I'm like always, it. It's about their I'm writing always, process. I'm always kicking around master class stuff. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I want to check that out. Um, I heard Ron Howard's is really good too. I considered um, the Russos for a similar reason of like they had the impossible task of so many franchises all coming together and everybody needing to get their due and looking at like Infinity War and and game they managed to pull that off. But that wasn't that wasn't what I landed on. Um, but since you brought it up as like everybody gets their due, I was thinking about that. Um, my actual pick is going to be uh, Chris McQuarrie. Oh, that was my other pick. I've said him before too. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a good great pick. Good pick. pick, James. He's not. He's not associated to Star Wars. Other I tweeted than... at him oh, about really? if he'd ever do a Star Wars movie, and he was like, "I'm not going to answer that question." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's the thing. Is like, I think people have kind of looked at him as as possibly doing it. He got burnt by the whole like Ryan Johnson thing. Like he was like, "I spent five minutes, at, ten minutes in this conversation, and I know why I never want to do Star Wars." But he has yeah. since come back on it. Somebody said, would you ever do a Star Wars movie? And he said something like along the lines of, uh, they know where to find me, you know? So I don't mm-hmm. think he's totally shut it off, but I think as far as like his reputation for being the writer that he is and the projects that he's put out, like Edge of Tomorrow, great movie that was like a, taking an idea that we've seen a hundred times and re- making it fresh and interesting um and uh not to mention just all the other tom cruise stuff like mission impossible those movies they just keep getting better and better deeper and deeper everybody's That's getting fair. more invested in the characters so i i think if you're talking three mission impossible movies like if you give him three star wars movies by that third one he knows how to take that character to a degree where you're like that it's built to this it's all led to this kind of thing um so if he ever decides to bite the bullet and do it i'm gonna be first in line i want to see that i'm trying Um, to see what he ended up saying to me oh i forget oh lame i think he deleted his tweet (laughs) (laughs) probably he says things and then he like takes them off the record deleted and blocked because i said to him january 22nd 2019 chris mcquarrie would you ever want to work on a star wars movie and then he replied with something, and then now it's missing. <laughs> and, I wrote, uh. and I wrote, sad face, well, I loved Fallout. It was unreal. I mm-hmm. wish you would, fingers crossed, big fan. So oh, he went he back and deleted. Didn't he say something like, uh, I would never touch that or something like that? Wasn't it something like that? So he, you what guys, it was he was, went back and deleted his tweet to me about how he would never do Star Wars. Ryan Johnson and Chris McCory were getting it, were, had a discussion on Twitter started, and then because he was tagged in it, everybody that was was still mad about the Last Jedi was like going on about how terrible mm. he, uh, Ryan Johnson is and and whatever. And Chris was like. This li- none of this stuff literally has anything to do with what we're talking about. And then somebody said, like, would you do a Star Wars movie? And he's like, uh, I grew up my entire life dreaming that maybe one day I would be able to do a Star Wars movie. But after tonight, that dream is dead <laughs> or something like that. Uh-huh. Now I'm curious what he said to me, because, James, you're saying recently he was like, well, maybe. I don't think it was. I, I, I mean, I was doing a little bit of research into this, like, because I remembered that he was said he'd never do the Star Wars thing, but I saw an article that said recently he had kind of changed his tune or he's not completely out on Star Wars, but it was because of a tweet like that. So he might have even deleted that tweet. Who knows? All right, that's going to be it for One with the Force. Uh, we're going to head into our next section, which is going to be longer discussion. John? 
Obi One once thought as you do. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, the new Andor trailer has been out for a bit. Um, we took some time to let it digest. We wanted Lacey to be back here for this discussion, so we're doing ours now. Uh, and let's have some fun. You know, the show got pushed out. It arrives on September 21st. Um, the trailer's packed with a lot of incredible shots, moments, dialogue, uh, intensity, and a, a bunch of character appearances. You know, Saw Gerrera's in there, and they, they, they're not hiding the fact. When so, I saw that, I squealed for James because I knew how he was looking forward to I him I forgot back. that he was confirmed, and I, I completely was caught off guard still. <laughs> so well let, let's start there so was that the thing when you first watched the trailer there was so much in it were you like leaving that trailer so to speak just being like oh my god i just saw saw Gerrera, like pre-injury saw Gerrera, pre-rogue one saw Gerrera, like there he is forrest whitaker's there like was that a big standout for you or did that blend in with everything else that happened in that trailer because it's 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 over two minutes you know it's a pretty long trailer it's a beautiful There's trailer. A lot of movement in it. It like I personally have. There's a couple things I'm like I think that happens before this, but a lot of it's like this is interesting because they're giving us a lot to look at. It's stunning, but it's also like we know the end game, but it's still like I'm going to this series really not having much information, and that's pretty cool. I think Saul's appearance is probably the most shocking reveal in that trailer. I think it was. I thought the, they would have kept that. Yeah. I th- I think it's the kind of the moment where you're like, oh my gosh, you know, like like this is this feels real now. And I think another good benefit to that is like I know I know we just got it kind of with Kenobi, you know, with with Vader and Kenobi being characters from the movies, but this does also kind of bring a little bit of like you remember going to see Rogue One the movie, like now we're bringing the movie to the to the television screen like your home like this is Saw Gerrera from the movie you know I, I don't know it's just yeah. something about it like when you see Skarsgård you're like oh wow the, he's a great character and I've seen him in a lot of stuff but he does TV you know what I mean it doesn't it doesn't immediately like pop but when they showed Saw Gerrera to me I was like oh my gosh this is real this is happening <laughs> kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah I almost Absolutely. wish I did record myself on that first watch and I think I watched him out of order I watched the good morning america version first and thought well that was the trailer man wow which great trailer i need you to i'm not sure which i watched or when so at some point in this discussion if there's a quick way where you can just iron out a bullet points of like this 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 is different you know oh i don't i mean it it's not really different like there i don't think there's anything in one trailer like the other one is a condensed version of the longer one. Oh, okay. So I Got don't, th- yeah, I, my initial thought was that it was a completely different trailer and there's all these other scenes and stuff, but then kind of like watching it a couple more times, I'm like, okay, no, it's just a, it's just a longer version. But I remember seeing the other one and being like, this one's freaking completely different, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't, what is all this? You know? Cause I watched the short one first. <laughs> I watched it so much later than everybody else. I feel like it was a combination of like. Oh, I, I watched it after sick. you, Lacey. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah I, it I was like one of those so things behind. where I was like, I'm not really sure what we're doing for the show mm, and other mm-hmm, things. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'll just wait. I'll watch it when I get home. And I, I definitely saw that you posted something before I did. I thought this trailer was awesome. I, this show is I think the first show where I'm going in without any expectations. Um, I think, I think Kenobi was at a certain level with me because it was Kenobi. I feel like Mando has now at first, I was like, well, this is the first star Wars show, you know, it's gotta be great. And then Mando's coming back. You're like, is it going to be good again? And it was, um, I feel like this is the first one where I don't know what to expect, especially because, you know, We've talked about it at length about the sets and the scenery and the on shoot on location shoots and the practical effects and stuff. I just don't know what to I to expect from this story. So I'm not the biggest Cassian fan. I loved Rogue One, but I'm not the biggest Cassian fan. So I wouldn't 
go into this being like, this has to be perfection. So that being said, I found that I'm like really at peace with <laughs> this show is going to be awesome no matter what, because I don't have any high expectations. Um, but so far, it might end up being my favorite thing. I, I said this off air that like this might end up being my favorite Star Wars show because it's just so good. And actually, two things stuck out to me from this trailer. One, I was like, am I a huge fan of Stellan Skarsgård? Because he is so good in this trailer. Every single moment he is on screen, he owns it. He, and he, her. Yeah, yeah. He, he leads the screen. Like, you could tell that, like, he is super important. I immediately want to know, like, okay, what is going on? How is this going to work? Is this guy going to die? Like, what is going on? Um, the other thing, honestly, that stood out to me the most was the music. It has a very kind mm -hmm. of Squid Game sound in the beginning with the kids singing or like the like really high pitch voices. And then the music is just so different, but like so awesome at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. It feels it has that sort of Blade Runner 2049 noir dystopian uh, Denny yes. Villeneuve sound, which is, yeah, James just like, yeah. doing a The beginning definitely face. sounds like Squid Games. <laughs> <clears throat> Squid Game. Um, yes, right. I agree. Um, there, yeah. There's, there's definitely spot. Like, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the best. Like, trailer breakdown person. It takes me a long time to really get into things. Where some people, like, they put up their videos. I'm like, how the hell did they see that? You know. Um, and by the way, I got to give a shout out to uh, Miguel. Um, he did a great job breaking down the trailer on Star Wars Newsnet. So, got to give a shout out to him. He he put a lot of time into that. So great job, buddy. Um, seeing Benthic, two tubes, and you know, you know, you saw him in Solo as part of the Cloud Rider gang. So I kind of tweeted that, and and people were like, "Oh, Emphis Ness, maybe." So that's possible that Emphis Ness could be making an appearance and in Jin. Um, in Andor. Jin, uh, so, uh, Jin's always going to be a possibility just because of the obvious connection to this mm -hmm. story. Um, but James, when you were bringing up Saw Gerrera and like, man, I saw him. And once I saw him, I knew this was like the real deal. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I would have felt if I saw Mads Mikkelsen, like Galen Urso mm -hmm. or, or Ben Mendelsohn. That would have been like, Oh, more Krennic. Holy cow. Which I hope we still get. Yeah. Um, but seeing the narration over what I'm assuming is young Cassian and you see this kid looking down like this, like escape well or whatever. That had to have been purposely mirroring the shot of Saw looking down at Jin when she was hiding, right? Like that looked like the same It didn't same look like exact... a well down though because he climbs into it and it looks like it's horizontal and then it looks oh. like he's in a, yeah, um, some type of outpost. So it looks like he's little and he climbs into the outpost and then it cuts away and then when it cuts back, he's walking. It starts with his feet and then it, well, I'm assuming this is Cassian his feet and then there's someone sleeping in there and then he like looks around and it's the uh empire's like I, outpost or something oh okay that that that's that makes sense then um and it does seem if if they are like sometimes in these trailers they do start where they start in the, mm -hmm. in the show mm -hmm. so i think we may start with a young cassian um and get that story like i had been hoping um but another thing that i found interesting was like and I don't know if anyone else made this connection and, and you guys might not think so, but I felt a lot of connection to like George Lucas's first movie, THX 1138, because you mm -hmm. see the all white. these people in the white outfits and it's sort of like one of those, like, you're just a number, like you're not a person. You just mm -hmm. get in line and, and obey with what we're saying. And that's sort of what that the crux of that movie was, is like, you're not a personality. You don't have emotions. You know, you're just a being in this dystopian world. So... And that paired with the, the the music and stuff really made me feel like that. And if they did that as as a, a subtle nod, but an appropriate one to the very first thing George Lucas ever made, I think that's pretty damn cool. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else thought that. I haven't really. I I purposely haven't looked at you know breakdowns and 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 those types of videos and stuff because I wanted to form my own opinions first. Um, but it's. I, I, I found that to be interesting, especially when you see Cassian's wearing it later in the trailer and then you see a bunch of them running down this hallway. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I 
the part that was weird to me was the part where Stellan Skarsgård like puts on like a fake nose and like wig and then he's like meeting with Mon Mothma and he's talking about playing a part with the woman that he's you know obviously like works with or lives with and then he's like I'm playing a part and then what he doesn't realize at this moment is that Mon Mothma is also playing a part so I'm curious to see if eventually they discuss like what their both their intentions are yeah. or are they two people that don't realize that they're both working towards the same thing I thought that was a flashback of him in like that he used to be a senator or something no because he's putting on like a nose and stuff he's putting on rings and he's fixing his jacket and he has a completely different nose and a oh. wig and then she says I didn't you're pick up on that but I mean I'm not saying you're wrong right because he's putting everything on and then she's like you're slipping and he goes, I'm not slipping. Um, I'm, I've just been hiding for too long. And to me, it seems like he's going out and he's running on these missions. And then he's going back to Coruscant and putting on this robe and putting on this wig and playing this part to get information to then go on the missions to, to lead the rebellion. He's playing the part that basically Mon Mothma's playing on the other side, which is the Senate. Interesting. They're both playing like high society people. So do you think when he's saying I've been hiding too long, he means pretending to be the high society is the hiding? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's how uh, I took it. Yeah. I, and I then, agree with you. Yeah. And then his like partner or whatever is like, you're, you're slipping. Because I think what I would assume is, is that he's going to go out and try to do something and then come back and then almost miss a meeting or something with Mon Mothma or someone that will then tip them off that something's going on. And he almost misses it. So that's why the person's like, you're slipping. Or like he lets something go in a conversation or something like that. Because this whole kind of trailer to me from the beginning where he's talking to Cassie and Andor and he's like, you know, we're slowly being choked or being choked so slow you don't notice. It's kind of like all these people are trying to operate to do something, but they don't know how to organize so I think that this show is really going to be about those people that have been constantly trying to figure out what do I do? This isn't ro this isn't right. And how do they organize into a rebellion? Because it seems like there's a lot of different people, but they're not working together. That's what I got from this trailer. Yeah. I mean, be beyond that, that's where the lore is right now is that there's right. a lot of rebel factions, but they're not quite yet an alliance. Which is why it goes to will. Saw Guerrera. Yeah. Is that like Saul's working on his own mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, the rebels, like the Phoenix crew and all that, they're mm -hmm. working on their own. And in some cases, yes, maybe they are reporting to someone bigger, but it's not really like a thing yet. And it isn't until the Battle of Scarif when they actually mm -hmm. like come out and they're like, okay, <laughs> we are all a group. We are an alliance. We are making right, our statement. Right. So at this point in time, there is no rebel alliance. There just keeps being random attacks and like rumors that that these people are rebelling against the faction. And doesn't it like I was just thinking about that that um like the character everyone thinks looks like a mix between Lobot and Maz Kanata. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he's he or whatever it is. He looks is like Ochi holding... Bastoon before Ochi yeah. Bastoon loses all his hair and becomes a crazy person. Yeah, he's like, he's holding a needle, which clearly has like this fluid in it. Like, I wonder if like they're going to start introducing like a one flew over the cuckoo's nest thing here where they're just like medicating these people to like stay in line. And like, that's how the Empire is keeping certain people under control. Because that's what that look that look, clearly looks like a, a needle to drug somebody with. Now I know they also do have that needle in the interrogation droid with Leia in A New Hope, so they they could be he could be holding some sort of serum to help someone be more revealing or so, like sort of like Borg gullet but a chemical he, version. He looks to um, me like he's like a, a an off he looks like the he's radar doctor. Yeah, yeah, he looks, it looks like, like, he's like helping they brought someone. him in to be. Th they brought in somebody to be like save this person's life, and they're like, and he's like cost doing you. it behind, yeah, like, behind the bar it. or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, he, he kind of reminds me of the uh, the like engineer room character from Spirited Away. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. 
who's mm. like helping people, but he's probably like doesn't he's reluctantly helping, but then yeah. you realize like he actually is a nice person once he, he Yes, exactly, James. Yeah. Um I really like some of these shots of the uh similar to the Saw Gerrera appearance of like, wow, this feels like the movie's being brought to the small screen. Uh, anytime we're seeing the Imperial Senate in these shots, there's one really good oh, like yeah. top down shot where you can yes. see the spiral. Um, very beautiful, very nice to see it now in the Empire stage because you can see there's a center podium now with the Empire logo down at the bottom. We are in the era of prequel. The prequel stuff is nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. And there's another uh, shot of Mon Mothma talking and there's a big Imperial logo on the front. And it's weird to associate her at this point, like publicly, she's senator in a pro, she's a pro empire senator kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys watch it with subtitles? Because you get a lot of character names in the subtitles. Yes. Yeah. So I'm really uh, interested in this Clea character, the girl at the end, the woman at the end in the red hood that says, this is what revolution looks like. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, and Harry's I like seeing uh, Valorum. Valorum was really cool. Not up. Valorum. <laughs> Everyone thought it was Valorum. It is not Valorum. Like uh, old it man actually with is white hair. That's got to be the actor Terrence Ben Stamps Miles character. from the show Coupling that I love from the UK, but mm. it is, what's his name? It is Tay Clova. Yeah. And. Cloma. That he, he's either part of the Senate or something, you know. Right. And I, I find it interesting that we get to see <clears throat> Mon Mothma sort of revealing that she's acting a certain way, public facing, t- to distract, just for the sake of distracting, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that they don't look into her for other reasons. Right. Like, everyone has their thing, so they think her thing is, like, to be disruptive in the Senate, and that's all. Right. So it's, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting approach. You don't see that very often. Thought that was cool. And I'm looking into the history on Fest. I guess that's you know Cassian's home world. His home world, yeah. I'm well, I'm assuming that's what we see here in the opening shots because it says it's very mountainous and and what have you. And it says it was uh, the hosting site of the Alliance to Restore the Republic, like the headquarters. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder if it's one of those things where we see it early and we see Cassian and we see like that planet getting like torn up by the Empire and then it's so- they sort of like take it back when he's older or something like that. But um, well, if that, that is Cassian, be- to if it's believed that that is Cassian at the beginning, the the young boy, you're you're looking, you're seeing him looking Why over what appears him, to be know? a mining colony. It's very Rose, the Last Jedi, reminiscent <clears throat> of like they come in. They take what they want, they destroy the planet, and they leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the trees are dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I so so that's I mean that's cool and that that has to be Cassian because what would be the point of misdirecting that? I mean the show is called Andor. Like just you, they don't have to be too cute about it. I think I agree, but I think, also when I watched it, it wasn't until I started seeing people talk about it that I thought that they pointed out that that is probably a young Cassian, and I was like, oh, I didn't think that at all. Oh wow, well, I did. Yeah, from from. Yeah, I, I kind did. of assumed that just from the six years old. But he's not quote six. That it, I know, but everybody's just assuming that I've been in this since I was six years old. They can literally say that he's six years old there. Yeah, he's they're they're gonna show him that. Like again, this goes back to that whole thing where this first season is gonna be just one year, and they're really gonna, uh, you know, use flashbacks, but one year in the present time, but they're really going to focus on Cassie and the person. And I think they're going to show the fact that, yeah, he started at six years old, but here he is at 13, still surviving in this sort of dead, like dead world that he lives on. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I like that aspect of it because you always hear about these origin planets of these characters and like Obi-Wan, you know, Stu John because of John Stewart and stuff. And a lot of it's throwaway stuff that they throw in reference novels and the fact that we're going to actually get to see Cassian's homeworld and that it's going to have a purpose and it has an impact that's shaping like who he is and who he becomes I think that's key and that could be just one of those things that Tony Gilroy was talking about how there's certain lines in Rogue One they're going to mean a lot more that's probably number one um, and mm-hmm. we're going to see why that's the case and then we'll see him maybe grow up through a montage or or, or whatever before we get to you know, the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where they put the hat on 
River Phoenix, and then all of a sudden it's Harrison Ford. We're going to get that flash moment from a young teenage Cassian Andor to what, James? 21 year old Cassian Andor? 21 year old Cassian Andor, yep. Which is wild. Yeah, Lacey, did you? <laughs> Me and James kind of had this moment last Thursday where we were looking at Wikipedia and stuff and Cassian's age. And according to that, and when he was born, he's only 21 in Andor. And Diego Luna's 42 playing him. He looks good. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Uh, good for I do have a question, him. though. Two questions. One, yes. oh, I thought her name was Debra. I just got really excited. It's Dedra, the girl with the, the blonde hair with the low bun, mm-hmm. the imperial. Oh, yeah. I thought it was Debra for a second. I was like, there you go, John. There's I think, your. I think it's pronounced Deborah. Normal name. It's D E D R A. That's a joke from Pop oh, Star. Sorry. <laughs> Again, a movie nobody watched. My, I mean, my she, Rudolph's yeah, name like, is Deborah, and they go, oh, wow, what an interesting name. What's the origin of that? And she goes, I think Debra. <laughs> <laughs> is, she the, is she the Krennic of this series, do you think? She, it definitely has that look. She's, she's the She's got Hux. the Death Troopers behind her. She uh, looks like a Hux to me. Yeah. A Hux. Um, my question for you guys was, did we ever find out the name of the character of the young woman? Is she, in fact, Cassian's sister? Is that a thing? <clears throat> I, I believe that was officially revealed. I don't think that was a speculation. I just saw a tweet from someone, so I never I think it's San Diego Comic-Con, something like her outfit or something. It said that. Uh, so... <laughs> so we haven't talked since the last time we talked about Cassian or the Andor series um, before the trailer and I had to laugh when we were talking about it and I was like she's definitely love interest I'm so excited blah 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 yeah. and then it ends up to be her sister which is so Star Wars of me that <sighs> I didn't even realize <laughs> um, I think she I'm looks to find fierce it now. though and you don't even hear her talk in this trailer you just see her basically running getting arrested and then getting hit in the face and she's like bleeding it's intense yeah it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a dark show like it's not gonna be a new hope you know is this show gonna change me john this show might change me i don't know if it'll ch- well change in what respect like make you like that type of star wars yeah yeah i think so i think you're gonna love this i mean you love everything that comes out especially live action so i, think I know you're really but like it I don't like depressing things, and I feel like I'm going to love this. Well, as Diego Luna joked, he's like, they couldn't kill me in this one. So, you know, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's making it out. But he's what, what's going to be odd, though, is like he's going to survive this series, and then like a week later, he dies. You know, He went through all of this just to hug on a beach. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it makes the movie great that uh, he dies, unfortunately. Like, yeah, they could have lived, but that moment is so impactful. Imagine the first movie. line of, of Andor, just for the sake of bookends, is like him doing something like more than a kid his age should do. And somebody says, like, your father would be proud of you. And then that's the last thing he says to Jin. I hate that. I <laughs> hope that, that doesn't me. happen. You hate that like that's not a good idea? Yeah. Oh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Now I hope it happens. I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> no, don't say that because every time you say something like that, you're like, you, you're going to hate that if it happens. It then happens. You know, you know how IMDb, <laughs> yeah. IMDb is sort of like Wikipedia where anybody can fill it in. Yeah. Nobody's filled in that character's name. So. Does, does it say that it's Arona? his sister? Well, let's get to the bottom of this now. I, I'm saying what? right now that because they didn't fill in their name, it wouldn't say it's his sister. It's just IMDb. Like it would just have the character's name. If it's like Samantha Andor, then I'd be like, oh, OK, then somebody has filled that in because they saw it somewhere. Mm. But mm. no one's filled it in. So I don't know that it's and I don't see anything on Wikipedia either. I feel like if it was revealed on a costume or something like that. All that anyway. comes up when I search Andor sister is a rumor that they're casting for his sister. So maybe that's what oh, people okay. are assuming that it's his sister. 
Oh, yeah. I didn't see anything official. I just saw somebody saying, like, it's his sister. Yeah, mm. there was a tweet that I saw someone talking about it, and I the joke was that I sent it to you guys, and I was like, have I been saying their love interest the whole time? <laughs> right, right. Yes. I, I swear. What's the I actress's saw... name again? Adria Arjona. God, by the way, mm -hmm. she's, like, gorgeous. Yeah. We're not breaking down this trailer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we kind of are. I'm distracted. Keep talking. So I like I think the, finding that out's important. But. I like the fest world because it reminds me a lot of um Corellia. It reminds me a lot of yeah. um uh, I can't think of the name of the right off the top, but ba ba bat crew or something. I can't think of it, but it's the Batu. one two. No no no. It's the one from oh. um Fallen Order. It might start with an R. I can't think of it right now, but um scrapyard sort of colony, uh it looks like. And I say I say that's fest, but this looks like this is where Andor's spending a lot of time in the present. If that's him when he was a kid, you know, it's this hilly place, this foresty place. But it looks like every time you see him later, he's in this like mining colony, scrapyard style place. Yes, I agree. I don't know if those are the same planets or not. There's also another sort of main character, which seems to be like the head of like a uh, I don't think they're imperial, but they seem like some sort of like police force. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, and also, James, in terms of the planet on Wikipedia, it says the climate for Fest is cold. So if we're seeing like Cassian in like this big like jacket or whatever, it's mm -hmm. possible that wherever we see him in that, that's the planet, his home, his home world. Um. Interesting. Now. I'm trying to skim through it. So you said a police force, James. I I thought it was interesting that the uh, stormtroopers are wearing the outfits from Solo. Did we talk about that? We yeah, we just got done what? talking about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no, no. This this yeah, I don't know. This police force. It's like a blue force or blue. Where what mark in the trailer is it? All over it. <laughs> There's like Pick seven one. guys who are all wearing this. There's a scene where like a bunch of guys get off of like a, a transport or something and they're all wearing these blue uniforms. They look like they're some sort of um, local law enforcement. It's the guys talking about pockets of fermenting. It's at 122, John. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. there's one. Oh, yeah. And there's, then right after that, there's they got even those sideburns oh, yes. coming out. Oh, yeah. These, but, are, these look like vintage 1977 Star Wars baddies by those sideburns. Yeah. Where's the one character, though? That, there's one that clearly has like a, a lead role. Um, the one at 121. One, yeah, 119. Yeah. That's probably, that might be the same character. No, no, so, no. 119. James, the guy, Linus Mosk, is the guy who's saying there's... Uh, fomenting out there, sir. Pockets of fomenting. But they're in the ships, by the way, that you see flying, I think, at the end of the trailer. The three ships. Mm hmm. Or no, sorry. Th yeah, they show that, but right before. So it's interesting it's that they're sending these people down. I wonder if these are the characters that are going down to collect taxes, like uh, Tala said. Remember when she was like, oh, they're going to collect taxes? Or she thought that's mm -hmm. what they were doing, and then they were killing people. So, Cyril Karn is who this guy Linus Mosk works for. He's the guy that we see in the front at 122 coming out of that ship. Mm -hmm. It says that Inspector Cyril Karn is chasing Cassian Andor and Luthen Rail. Interesting. So, they're a, maybe a hired sort of mercenary team or they work for the empire and sort of like a bounty hunter thing but maybe more of an organization mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're out to find cassian and luthan what so kind of not... creature is that in the next good guys like the guys that are reacting to them arriving on the planet what kind of creature is that in the middle is that a consta constable zuvio type character because that's no, what it looks no, no, like no. you think that hmm. looks like him yeah a little bit oh i don't know at all 
Well, because Constable Zuvio has like the face covering. This guy mm-hmm. just has his face exposed. I guess. Good yeah, I don't know. He's probably just a different species that no one's ever seen before. Star Wars does. That's a lot exciting. Of that. I can't wait to see more creatures in this show. That's always my well, like number one thing is like show me where, weird stuff. Where are we thinking this? These shots of these like massive like elevator systems is Coruscant. Coruscant. That is Coruscant. Yeah. I would assume. Hmm. Because it's like that to me just screams that, Coruscant. That makes a lot of sense though. Like if they if they somehow converted Coruscant or a lot of Coruscant into sort of like. The, like a big imperial or empire hub because that's where Palpatine's like secret Sith headquarters was. I mean, yeah. If you look they're... up when it pans up to the sky or tilts up to the sky, you can see the the, the lanes of traffic. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. It go- goes the other way. It goes down, which to me is implying that like they're we're up high, like they're they're the the elite up there. But we're going down into the dumps. As that elevator goes down, you're seeing the corruption and you're seeing the city get darker and deeper mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with that, that panty shot. That shot has been in there for a while and it's been Tilt very shot. exciting. I, I brought it up in uh, on an earlier episode about how the way that, that Coruscant has always just been shot like from the top down or look kind of landscapey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we mm-hmm. got a couple city shots, but we've never gotten this like these artistic views of like seeing the city like an indie film sort of thing. I'm like that shot right there and the fact that it's like following the elevator down. I'm like that is crazy. That does that is the city from the prequels, but that does not feel like the prequels. That feels above the prequels in a yeah weird kind of <laughs> pretentious way, but I understand what I'm saying. But that to me looks like like a Blade Runner 2049 kind of thing. Like that looks like a an elevated uh, framing or something that is just like so clever or or interesting more so than just like kind of what we got in the prequels, which were just straight on shots of the city you know Mm -hmm. the set at uh the explosion at 157 looks like the set that that one video years ago they were driving through the set when they were building it Mm -hmm. it looks like that Mm -hmm. yeah i agree what do you guys make of that line are you a fish or a thief that is a weird line it isn't it i found it a little weird does a fish mean like sort of like of how fish travel in schools and you can't tell one from the other sort of thing? Like it's sort of autonomous. You're just the one of many. I don't know why like they would I... take it out of context, but my thought on it was that there's a line before it that, or like a story, like when you sit somebody down and you're like, have you ever heard the story? You know, and that like, <laughs> don't have Darth Darth Plagueis, Plagueis, yeah, no. <laughs> but like, you know, how somebody who's like interrogating somebody would be like, they are they're explaining how society works through this little example, this little faint little story or something. And I feel like um in the story, like you learn the difference between a fish and a thief or something in this particular thing. And she just gives her that line. She's like, So at the end of the day, are you a fish or a thief? And it's like we're uh, hearing yeah. that line, but that it doesn't good. it doesn't make context at this point. They need yeah, so they need it to make sense. Like they're gonna tell us what it means and yeah, have yeah, it yeah. pay off later. Yeah. What'd you guys think um, of the solo deleted scene ship? That was pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. That uh is that was now did they use that in Solo's concept stuff based on Ralph McQuarrie? Because that looks very Ralph McQuarrie. The ship was designed to be used in the original Star Wars and they never used it. So they right. used it in solo, but then <laughs> it got cut. <laughs> so now it's making its first appearance. Although so there is a toy of it. it. I've seen the toy. Yeah. Interesting. The um going back to those guys in blue, the Linus Moss guy says there's fermenting out there, sir. Pockets of fermenting. Yeah. You guys this is probably an obvious statement, but you know he he's talking about like the rebellion, right? Like the there's people out there that are mm-hmm. forming. Yeah. That we need to deal with. Yeah. So yeah. So that's what I was saying. Like he works for that inspector guy and it says that inspector guy is chasing Cassian and Luthen. Mm-hmm. So 
yeah, he's reporting to somebody. I assume it's the inspector who I was talking about, Cyril Karn. Um, and we're gonna. I don't know. If, I don't know that we've seen him yet because on Wikipedia he doesn't have a photo yet. But it says he was a human inspector who lived during the Imperial era and chased Cassian, Jaren Andor, and Luthen Rail on Ferrix. So Ferrix is. Here we go now. Ferrix is that planet. It's a. Oh, sorry, Lacey. It says it's a desert world. No. <laughs> Located in the galaxy during the Imperial era, Cassian and Luthen Rail were ambushed by Cyril Karn. I also assume we are. Are we going to Jetta? I don't. I don't think that we are. Is that not the same partisan hideout, or is that that's a different one? It looks My very much be- like. Um... They have the same X-wing that they u- that they have mm-hmm. at the time, which doesn't mean anything. You could obviously take your ships with you too, but yeah, the fact that it, the landscaping of their hideout is also very similar makes me think that maybe it is just that that's their location. They set up shop uh, near Jeddah. It honestly looks like um, what's the planet that they're on in the Force Awakens? I'm blanking right now. In the Force Awakens? Yeah. Jakku? What? No, not Jakku. The place where Leia and her team are. Oh, oh um, Dakar. D- Dakar. Dakar. Yeah. It looks like that. Oh, sort of. Except for the green. No green. I think if you look at if you no, think about the parts in the where the partisans are located in this trailer? Yeah. At one oh six, two tubes, there's green near him. It's rocks and green. So, like, I'm saying, like, it could be that planet because they could have set up the base and then Leia ends up there eventually. You're not wrong. That d- It looks very brown and gross, but that is, you're right, it's grass. It's not sand. So, so yeah. You're probably I, I right. This yeah. is not Jetta then. And, yeah, because if you think about their hideout in, on Jetta, like, it doesn't, like, it looks like they're nomads. Like, there's not facilities Mm-hmm. They're just in these like caves and it looks like they're designed to purposely be able to pick up and go as soon as they can. Yeah. Um, you know, Papa bore gullet in a, in a, what do they call is the, the comfort doggy things? carrier? No, the, Borg where you can put them on with you. <laughs> Borg what do they call those? I don't know. The pets. We are like, Oh, this is my pet and I need it for my emotional state, emotional, emotional, uh, support animal. Poor gullet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is clearly where they're hiding out. And I agree, it's a different planet. And I don't know if it's part of Ferrix or not, because that shot of those planes or whatever, like uh, at 105, like right before that, it almost looked like, you know, when you're flying over the Midwest and you look out your plane window and you see just those squares of land. But you look out further and you see mountains so that could either be cassian's home world that could be the you know there's sand out there that could be this this desert location ferrix we're talking about so mm-hmm. but it's cool that we know like Lacey said on monday show like we're seeing tangible places where you know a lot of these you'll be able to visit obviously they're incorporating cg into some of the landscapes and stuff but we're getting new planets and, and that sort of thing and yeah there may be a desert planet but i don't think it's going to be like a it's all desert, you know? I think mm-hmm. there may be... We might be finally getting more layers to these Star Wars worlds where it's not like, Hoth is all ice. Tatooine is all sand. Mm-hmm. This is the... You know? Mm-hmm. So uh, I like that aspect of it because it looks like there's a lot going on with these planets and I think they, they can do a lot with them. So forgive but I'm, me. I'm really... It, th- this was all revealed on a Lego set, by the way. This Ferrix planet, these these guys who were looking for them... And apparently it was revealed at Celebration. And that's so old school. Cause oh, like, Lego. I remember when we were doing, like, talking and speculating on Solo. And I remember being at the New York Toy Fair, the Hasbro Toy Fair, and seeing the Falcon box. And they had it, parts of it blacked out. Yeah. And Han had the canisters. And I'm like, Coaxium is going to be the thing in this movie. And then, sure enough, that's what they were going for. I'm like, this mm-hmm. Coaxium thing, I don't know what it is. These toys are, like, the key. And I love that because it's, like... It's not really spoiling because it's official stuff and allows you to play this detective work. And, and and we know that these guys are, you know, after them and it doesn't really give too much away. And that just brings back good feelings of speculating on Star Wars in an innocent way. 
So forgive me if we if we're covering this because I'm kind of getting confused every time we talk about these guys in blue. Who who is this character at one nineteen? One nineteen in for audio America. listeners like just go and pull up the YouTube video. <laughs> like we keep doing yeah, timestamps. So so it's the person that people were like, oh, is that Sam Witwer? <laughs> like yeah, it does. Way off though. <laughs> like the, uh, that it looks like him, but it's obviously not Sam Witwer. Yeah. Um. I I don't know who that is, but Mosk is Mosk is talking to him. Yeah, but so. y- you're y- to me the vibe that I've gotten is that this guy has more of a like he would be higher billing than the other character. Yes, he looks like he's reporting to this guy. So you know who that is? That's that's Inspector. That's who that is. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's assume that's Cyril Karn. Okay. And he looks pissed. Yeah, that guy looks like he he could play Thrawn. Honestly, if you look in the other trailers, he he seems like he's the one who's sort of the head of this group or this organization. And the people under him, they almost feel like they're you know following his orders, but they're a little bit more reluctant. The other guy, to me, looks like he's a little bit more you know lenient, and he's more like, sir, they're you know. I don't know. Maybe. Kind of reminds me of the guy from Rise of Skywalker. They're like, they're just people, you know? Like, I don't don't know what to tell you. (laughs) Yeah. So, if we were going to end, because we're, we've been quite (laughs) rambling for quite a while. Right. um, What part or character makes you guys the most excited from this trailer? (sighs) That is so tough. I can easily say it's probably this this Clea tra- uh, character at two minutes. She oh, just looks yeah. so cool. Her I was just looking looks cool. Yeah, I was just looking at her, and I was thinking like, that's a whole other angle that I'm not even really sure where that character fits in at all. I don't know who that's supposed to be. I don't know what. I don't know. The angle is there. I'm just like so excited for her character. She just looks so cool. And you could tell by the way that she's carrying herself that like she doesn't care. She's got nothing to lose. Yeah. I'm excited about the saw stuff that like I said, that was a real big pop, but that's only because like that wouldn't have popped if I didn't know who that character was or something. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think what was interesting to me is seeing uh, Lutheran give that line where he says, I'm not slipping. I'm just uh i've been away i've been hiding too long and there's like a shot of from the back of him looking out the ship and it looks like he's like leaning over and he's firing up these jets he looks like he is someone who's been playing this game and he's an expert and he doesn't make mistakes and he you know he does everything right and like they they flip it around and they show his face and there's like this blue lighting and stuff on him i'm like the colors in this are just so powerful. I don't know what it is, but like somehow this, it still feels dark and dreary yet. Every, every time there's like, it's very vivid. Yeah. There's like a light here or there. And somehow it just pops so well that it just makes me feel like there's quality in it. You know what the other thing the color correction or the color grading is just, so good that I'm like only professional work looks like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The other thing that stood out to me compared to the shows that are in the volume is you see a lot of more shots from down low and up high. Like shooting at Mm. the sky, shooting at the ground because they're shooting in these vast, gigantic, lush locations and sets that they're able to shoot from all these different angles and they aren't closed to a box. So they're able to get these like really cool, like foreground, middle ground, vast background. Yeah. Like at one forty five, there's this really cool shot, like looking up at a ship that's taking off. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know that we would have gotten that in the volume. Right. <sighs> hmm. I I think the last shot is what got me. Just that that action shot of the tie fire the tie fighter 
panning it like by right passing the camera and getting chased by a ship mm-hmm. like that felt so star wars like major motion picture mm-hmm. quality mm-hmm. uh so cool i guess one question i have though because i didn't read uh the rogue one prequel novel was that shot of cassie saying like about how he like snuck in like under their noses and stuff was he ever part of the empire or is this him pulling a a Finn and Rose and like getting an outfit and and, and doing a classic Star Wars sneaking in disguise Ooh. thing. Because it is a spy show, so to me that would mean he's you know sneaking and 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 just stole an outfit and snuck aboard with a you know he had a key card and he uh, I, pulled the James Bond thing. I think that's, that's my it. assumption. Yeah, okay. and I also think yeah. that's that's a little bit of a like you know andor from rogue one the guy who stole the outfit and they snuck into the base right exactly so i think yeah. there's a little bit of that too um i don't think he was ever part of the imperial army it would be too much officially I feel like that, that's like han's story like because he wouldn't like have been able to do anything good he would have been like stuck having to report for duty all the time right mm-hmm. and then this guy's going they're... here and there and there and here and doing missions and blowing stuff up that's what I and want then to there would be it. the potential of people like Krennic or or Galen knowing him and stuff, and it would just. Uh, I just don't want to. S- I like the idea that when they started opening up about these people who were with the Empire and defected, because that's how real life goes sometimes. But I don't want that to do with too much, where all of our heroes at some point were with the Empire, all of our new mm-hmm. heroes, you know. And mm-hmm. it seems like they do that quite a bit now. I um, really like this ship that uh, Lutheran is in. That oh character. yeah yeah that ship yeah. looks really cool there's a really cool shot of like the top uh guns coming out and then they switch yes. and it shoots down the, the tie turrets. fighters and stuff yeah and it's like flipping around i'm like that ship looks awesome it looks like a Carillion ship ship a little bit with how the guns with the cockpit are, yeah the mm-hmm. cockpit and i like how it has the old school 1977 like radar screens on it mm-hmm. and the buttons i like that they're they have they're forced to keep the 70s aesthetic i think that's so fun yeah that you could see that in the sideburns with the imperial people yeah Mm -hmm. and it's just such a busy trailer this is probably the hardest trailer to like try to break down i I think so much going on because i think there's a lot of locations and there's a lot of new characters where you're like that character looks prominent but I don't know who they are or what they're doing. And that, and in some cases, that's good. Like, yeah, we do have our Stellan Skarsgård here. But like at the same time, I feel like a lot of this cast is new faces that I'm like, I'm just going to that forever. That person's going to be that Star Wars character for me for a long time. Yeah, I, I guess my, my last thought Not full of stars. Which is a question I have is like that voiceover of Cassian at the 35, 36 second mark where it's clearly still a young Cassian and he's in what is no doubt some sort of imperial ship or location. As he's saying, they, they, they can't imagine someone like me would ever get inside their house. It looks like some type of outpost. I think it's the crash ship. Or it could be a crash ship, yeah. I think it's the one that they look up and they see it's on fire and it crashes over there and he goes and explores and he sees, he climbs in. What's on but it, fire? The ship, isn't it? Which ship? Yeah. In the blast trailer. Yeah. Oh, There's sorry. There's a ship that is flying over the, the, the top and this one, they kind of switched it up because everybody looking up at the sky, you think it's going to be that same shot, but it, in this time it was the so Imperial that's what I'm Star thinking. That's what I was confused about. I was like, what? He, when he, he climbs- learned. When he climbs into that hole you were talking about, John, if you look at it, it looks like he's climbing up and into it. However, I said there's, that. It's, he's going sideways. I, I know, yeah. but but if you look at the side, there's a ladder that leads up. So this is assuming maybe the if ship it turns it like tipped or that something. That makes sense. Possibly. Oh, okay. Yes. So, yeah. Um. Okay. But then again, the whole ship would be sideways, and when he's walking around in it, it does seem like it's. But, you know, outer space sometimes, <laughs> like maybe so things This is like sideways. a little reminiscent like a of like thing. Ray being this young sort of scavenger in an, in a, this Imperial ship and stuff like maybe, but with Cassian, it's different because he's learning how to access stuff in this downed ship on his home planet or something. And that's how he's able to figure certain things out that maybe other people aren't. Um, and that's a heavy speculation, but that's clearly the younger version of Cassian there. And he's in this location and they're going to show that to us for a reason so 
Um, mm-hmm. I, and yeah, we are up against time, so there, I don't know if you guys have anything else to toss out there, but we will certainly revisit more of this as TV spots and stuff come out. I think I'm good. I think we've yeah. <laughs> talked about it. Yeah. There's so many bits and pieces. I'm sure we miss things, but it's mm-hmm. like, it's just so much. Yeah. Well, and we were going to do the chosen one. I don't know if you guys still want to do it or if we should save it, but uh, let's save it. Yeah. All right. So, cause I was going to wing it anyway. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll bring that one next week, but, uh, that does bring us towards the end of the show. So we want to thank everybody for listening and watching, uh, a wild trailer to try to break down. Um, so we want to know what you think, uh, about our takes and our thoughts, some wild, some probably obvious, some, some interesting, hopefully, and uh, hit us up in the comments, share the episode and spread the word. Um, but before we do go, I just want to say a special thank you to our patrons at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast for supporting the show. Um, you allow us to spend so much time doing this podcast and we spend way more time behind the scenes making the thing work than what you watch two times a week. So I just really want to thank everybody who um, is able to support us. I know it's tough times for a lot of people out there but i want to give a special thank you to our generals and spice runners so our generals are carmelo john Reese, jetta rosewater paul olson frank grande darth hurricane john charlton nick kratz christian morales brian smith matt chitty danny mike ramori matt heath chris white brendan mclaughlin count pepto samuel zilke and val trichkoff and spice runners david Probus, neil shaw kendall gellner ryan wara dave hornack micah harrison thomas hennessy andrew staley and Jeremy Myers. Thank you all so much and all of our patrons. Again, if you want to support us, we have some new stuff in the works coming out soon for phase four. Uh, $2 a month to gain access to the page and uh, there's tiers if you want to uh, have more perks, benefits, and rewards. Uh, Make sure you go to Star Wars News Net for all of your Star Wars news and um, if you are watching on YouTube and see below, you can grab some of our merch right there. It's also on Spring and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey, writing and editing at Star Wars News Net, and my movie podcast, Just Like the Movies, available on all podcast apps. Lacey. People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. JB. Um, Twitter and also Instagram, both at Myra Trunks. All right. We will return on Monday with another episode. So we hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time right here on the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids.